was that, um, and the, the article that sort of stood out to me was that Time's Up uh, decided not to take the case. Uh-huh. Um, and so, you know. That was I important did, to you. That, that did, meant, I, well, maybe there's more to this story here. Right. I did my work and I, and I spoke to Time's Up and I just don't feel comfortable throwing away a decent man that I've known for 15 years. Yeah. Um, in this, in this time of complete chaos without there being, um, a thorough investigation. I'm sure that, um, mainstream media would be jumping all over this, um, as well. If, if, you know, if they we weren't in a pandemic uh, oh or if there was something. more if there was more credible if there was evidence no, that if, was if they found more evidence or, or through it. their investigate so i'm just kind of staying quiet about it and yeah Alyssa milano explains silence on joe biden allegation as usual there are many angles to this story about where their biases lie there have been giant articles published on other men for much less, okay? And what I've realized throughout this last year, especially, okay, the last 12 months, is that I as a woman am not actually cared about by these media outlets, okay? I am a prop, okay? So if I were to make sexual assault allegations against some establishment darling, they would crush me. If I made sexual assault allegations against a true progressive, Oh, it would be all over the news, all over the news. I mean, Aziz Ansari was written about by every news outlet imaginable, and it was the most ridiculous, in my opinion, so-called sexual assault allegation ever. But it was covered by everyone, by everyone. And when it comes to this story, she was a staffer for him. It's not like she's some random person who's never had contact with him. And they say that she changed her story. You know what she changed in her story? When she first came out, she talked about how he would sexually harass her. And she talked about how she went through the proper channels in order to report that. But she didn't uh, share all the details about how he had sexual, allegedly sexually assaulted her. Now that she's coming out with the specific details about how he allegedly sexually assaulted her, they're like, oh, she changed her story. No, actually, she elaborated on her alleged experience with Joe Biden. But, I mean, who cares, right? Who cares? Because Joe Biden, in their minds, is the establishment candidate who has the best chance of beating Donald Trump, which is ridiculous. I mean, homeboy can't even get a live stream together. How is he going to beat Donald Trump? He's a nightmare. So the plot thickens. We're starting to hear that perhaps Alyssa Milano is not coming out strongly against Joe Biden because of bias. Because I'm staying quiet about it. um, You were getting dragged on Twitter by Bernie bros. Right. They're they're calling me hypocritical for for, you know, and saying that I'm a fake feminist and all of this all of this wow. stuff. And I'm still I'm still trying desperately to to you know, to stand back and be sort of objective about this because um I don't want this to you know I, I sent the Me Too tweet over two years ago. I, I, I never thought that it would be um, something that was going to destroy innocent men, right? Like, yep. we don't want that to happen either. So a couple things here. She's presuming Joe Biden to be innocent, which presumes Tara Reid to be a liar. So she's she's not actually saying Tara Reid is a liar, but she's saying Joe Biden is innocent, which means she doesn't believe Tara Reid. And Andy comes on and accuses those who are pushing back against Alyssa Milano as being Bernie bros. And then Alyssa says, right. So not only is Alyssa erasing Tara Reid, she's erasing all the women who believe in Bernie Sanders. And she's erasing all of the women who believe Tara Reid's story. So she's cutting the legs out from underneath Tara Reid because Tara Reid needs all the people to be believed who are on her side. Alyssa Milano is not only discrediting Tara Reid, but all of those of us who believe Tara Reid's story. And that's why the you know story is being ignored. That's why Tara Reid is being ignored. All of which is to say that she is saying, I don't believe her. She is uncredible. Joe Biden is innocent, which basically amounts to, 
I don't believe all women. I don't believe this woman in this particular instance, at least. And you can see Andy Cohen basically feeding this along. And he has the absolute freaking gall to suggest that the people wanting accountability and consistency from one of the leaders of the Me Too movement, Alyssa Milano, this is not a regular person. This is a very wealthy and influential actress who has taken a leadership role in this movement demanding that we hear from her on this issue and demanding that we get a consistent response we were dragging her quote unquote as bernie bros because after all people who want justice for women like tara reed and women like christine ford are just bernie bros at the end of the day joe biden accuser says time's up betrayed her in that hallway he was a man assaulting a woman by colin kalmbacher Time's Up is a foundation started in the aftermath of the Harvey Weinstein debacle. Time's Up is under the umbrella of the National Women's Law Center. Time's Up was started specifically to help people like Tara Reid, who are accusing powerful men of sexual assault. And Alyssa Milano has been an outspoken proponent of the Me Too movement, Time's Up, and of the National Women's Law Center. Earlier this year, Tara Reid says she contacted one of the leading organizations that represents Me Too survivors and helps them tell their stories. She approached the Time's Up Legal Defense Fund in confidence, hoping for support against former Vice President Joe Biden, who she claims sexually assaulted her in the nation's capital in 1993 when she worked as one of his Senate staffers. Reid ultimately did not receive all the help she sought, an experience which has left her sorely disappointed in the advocacy groups that sprung up to explicitly help people like herself in the aftermath of the 2017 Harvey Weinstein rape scandal. What I don't understand is the Me Too movement, she said, who has been silent. Speaking with Law and Crime, Reid said she felt specifically led on by the Time's Up Legal Defense Fund. She described a terminal search for lawyers whose names were provided to her by the group but who declined to represent her for various reasons, including some lawyers who said they were fearful of Biden and others who outright said they were Biden supporters. Reid described an organization that in the end she believes manufactured an excuse not to fully support her. As more details have come to light, however, Reid's feelings about her fruitless work with the group have drastically shifted. She now believes the Time's Up Legal Defense Fund effectively functioned as a catch and kill operation for Biden's 2020 presidential campaign. At the center of the controversy and Reid's concerns is the crisis management firm SKD Knickerbocker, whose managing director Anita Dunn reportedly provided Weinstein with free strategy and damage control. Dunn is currently the decision-making authority behind Biden's campaign, according to the New York Times. SKD Knickerbocker oversees the Time's Up Legal Defense Fund's public relations efforts and assists with providing survivors access to other public relations outfits in their network. Whoa, does that look like conflict of interest to you? The following timeline illustrates the fraught situation. March 2019, former Nevada State Senator Lucy Flores accuses Biden of inappropriate touching. Seven additional women, including Reed, come forward to allege similar incidents. June, September, December 2019, the Biden campaign makes payments totaling $75,568 to SKD Knickerbocker. Three different big payments totaling over $75,000. In January of 2020, Reed approaches Time's Up Legal Defense Fund. In January 2020, throughout the month, the Biden campaign makes payments totaling $548,480 to SKD Knickerbocker. In February, Dunn is elevated to decision-making authority in the Biden campaign. Pay to play. February, throughout February of 2020, Reed says she continues conversations and attorney searches with Time's Up Legal Defense Fund. In late February, the Biden campaign makes one payment totaling $257,691 to SKD Knickerbocker. Throughout the month of March, Reed speaks with the Intercept's Ryan Grimm, resulting in a story about Time's Up's decision not to proceed with the case. In March, Reed learns about Dunn's work as SKD Knickerbocker's managing director and relationship with Time's Up Legal Defense Fund via Grimm's article. 
This tangled web of arguably conflicting interests was all news to Reed, who says she was stunned to learn about Me Too's group's connections to SKD Knickerbocker and Biden's campaign. The timeline looks very draconian to me, she said in an interview. From my perspective, the payments look like a way to silence me further from getting my story heard. Now, last summer, I detailed the connection of Creative Artists Agency and other talent agencies like UTA with some of the people who are players in this game. Using a wiki-leaked email, I made a connection between Creative Artists Agency and United Talent Agency with some of the people like Alyssa Milano. It all started when I found a video with Nico House and Sofia Zalvidar explaining how prominent talent agency executives are connected to the Clinton machine and how these talent executives have been leaders in the efforts to groom Democratic presidential candidates to run against Bernie Sanders in the 2020 presidential election cycle. Clients make use of the agency's services to blend pop culture, entertainment, and politics to help them form their own unique brand. CAA donated almost $479,000 to candidates and PACs in 2018, including to Cory Booker, Kamala Harris, Elizabeth Warren, and Beto O'Rourke, all who received donations of $11,000 or higher. CAA represents all of Joe Biden's interests as well. Who else is on the client list of CAA? Glad you asked. Anderson Cooper, Alyssa Milano, Anna Navarro, Bette Midler, Bill Maher, Twitter co-founder Christopher Isaac Biz Stone, Bob Schieffer, Bob Woodward, Carl Bernstein, Martha Raditz, Katie Tour, Jim Schuto, Jamel Hill, David Farenthold, Stephanie Rule, Elizabeth Vargas, Gail King, Ian Bremmer, Frank Luntz, Colin Jost, David Kushner, Chris Cuomo, Connie Chung, Leonard McKelvey, known professionally as Charlemagne the God, who recently was smearing Tulsi Gabbard, Howard Dan Pfeiffer, former senior advisor to President Obama, Donna Brazil, Jimmy Fallon, Joe Biden, Valerie Jarrett, Mark Cuban, Rob Reiner, Seth MacFarlane, Stephen Colbert, Susan Rice, Van Jones, James Corden, and Whoopi Goldberg. Spike Lee also. Here's what Rose McGowan thinks of Alyssa Milano and Creative Artists Agency. Your former Charmed co-star, Alyssa Milano, gets a lot of credit for helping me to go viral. So? Are you proud of her? I don't like her. Why? Because I think she's a lie. Why? Do you think I don't know these people? I'm not looking at this from the outside. I have a lot of experience. I know she's married to a CAA agent. Do the math. Who's behind Time's Up? CAA. Where do they meet? CAA. Who needs good PR? CAA. Who are part of the pimp problem? CAA. These are very powerful people you're talking about. They are. So am I. Rose McGowan was one of the victims that Me Too was trying to help, and that's what she had to say about Alyssa Milano and Creative Artists Agency. Alyssa Milano is on the speakers list of Creative Artists Agency. Inquire below to book Alyssa Milano, actresses, celebrity entrepreneurs, celebrity speakers, philanthropy. Here's her biography. This is from 2011. Alyssa Milano, CAA agent Dave Bugliari expecting first baby. So she's married to a CAA agent and has children with him. So what we're seeing is a lot of conflict of interest. You have the CAA propping up the Clinton machine and Obama world, and then you've got them also starting a Me Too movement, simultaneously protecting powerful men who rape people, and then trying to help their victims. It's kind of like Monsanto who makes things that cause cancer and then offers cancer treatments. It looks to me that Andy Cohen, who's also part of the machine, was told that he needed to get Alyssa Milano on his show and give her a chance to cover her tail feathers. Here are some tweets on the subject. Let's just dispense with the formalities and openly call the Democrats begging beyond hope to appoint their own Trump for four more years of post-truth leadership by their true names. If it was real, the media would cover it, is straight from the sitting president's mouth. Dr. Cube says, All major U.S. news outlets just want to protect their owners and sponsors. Bernie is a threat to all of them. 
This is from Stay the Fuck Home replying to Cristo Ivalis. Oh, I just noticed this. This is a screenshot from my article. I'll link to that article below in case you want to read it. It was from August of last year, but it's still pertinent. Joseph Mangano says, In 2020 BC, before COVID, Bernie's huge rallies were real despite the lack of media coverage. War in Yemen is real no matter how much MSNBC tries to overlook it. The problem is not the story, but the storytellers only reading certain pages. Milano's is the real malarkey. Michael Corcoran says, At least independent media stuck with the issue to force her to put her shameless double standard on display. Next up, Biden, Warren, MSNBC. Only with your help, dear listeners and viewers, we need to spread this stuff far and wide. We need it to be trending on Twitter day after day after day. We won't get the whole story unless we force the hands of the storytellers. Please share the fuck out of all of the videos and articles you can find that tell the other side of this sordid tale. Get on board the Bernie or Buzz train. Come get on board the Bernie or Buzz train. Once you hear that clickety clack, there ain't no time for turning back. Come get on board the Bernie or Buzz train. The preceding episode can be viewed on the YouTube channel. Bernie or Bust Television.